What is up everyone with the August update? I'm sure you guys know by now all of the heroes and villains minus Bosk are getting new star cards. They are replacing the health on kill card. It is going to be a passive ability for every single hero now. All you have to do is get a kill and you will get health back. And then they are replacing the health on kill cards with a completely new card. So I want to go over all the different heroes now and just go over what I would choose for just the different star cards to see what the best possible combinations are. Because before, I mean, every single hero in Galactic Assault and Capital Supremacy was pretty much tied down to the health on kill card. They pretty much were handicapped and could only choose two cards. So this is a huge plus and I'm so excited that they're getting rid of that. And it, it just opens up so many different possible different combinations and stuff. But before I get into the video itself, I wanted to take this time to thank today's sponsor, which is Amino. Over on Amino, I make these short sort of behind the scenes slash vlog kind of things uh, just to give you guys some extra content for you all. Amino stories are short vertical videos that you can easily watch on your phone. In my latest video, I recently went to my very first Comic Con and I brought home a lot of cool new gadgets and just new stuff that I wanted to show off to you guys. You guys can search for any topic you like on the app stores such as Star Wars or even Battlefront 2. And just like on YouTube and Twitch, you can follow your favorite creators and see all their latest stories and a feed for easy interaction. To download the free app, click the link in the description down below, the pinned comment, or just search for Amino Apps to download it. And don't forget to catch all of my stories by searching for Swanee Plays Games and by hitting that follow button and the bell to be notified of when I post new videos. Every time you guys follow and watch my stories, it's a great way to help support me and help me grow the channel for absolutely free. I really like making these sort of short, little small behind the scenes videos and hopefully you guys really like it as well. Now getting into the actual video, let's start with Chewbacca. His a new card says, Impervious, every time Chewbacca deals a threshold of 200 combined damage with any ability, he gains 2% damage reduction to a maximum. This effect resets after Chewbacca is defeated. So, Chewbacca, I don't think he's ever going to be that good. Right now, you have this card, which increases his max health. I mean, max health is always a bonus. So, another 150. So, I'm probably going to go with that one. And then this one down here is getting changed. I'm probably going to go with a new card for Chewbacca as well. So I don't know how many kills it's going to be, but I'm guessing maybe 15 to 20% damage reduction to a max. That could be pretty cool. If you're on like a 20 or something kill streak, then it's going to be even harder and harder and harder to kill Chewbacca the longer that he's alive. So let's say this card, the new card, and then it's kind of up for debate depending on which game modes you play. But with Chewbacca, I like to go with this one because he receives less damage while Bowcaster is active. So think of it this way. If he has 20% damage reduction with Bowcaster active, and then you get the full max amount from the new card, let's say it's 20, then that would be a combined 40% damage reduction while his Furious Bowcaster is active. He's going to be hopefully a freaking tank. Now, th some of these cards are obviously different for heroes versus villains, like the shock grenade stuff is what I would probably go with. Like if it was a heroes versus villains loadout, I'd probably go shock grenade, shock grenade, um, and then maybe more shock grenade. <laughs> because the longer that they're stunned with a shock grenade in heroes versus villains, that makes a big difference. But for galactic assault and capital supremacy, I'm going to go with this loadout. So health, new card, and damage reduction. And then we have Han Solo. Han, um, his new card is just called Smuggler's Wits. Han gains an extra dodge, but its ability cooldowns are increased. Um, I'm not going to go with that one. I don't really care about getting an extra dodge with Han. Maybe in Heroes versus Villains it might be a little bit better, but I would much rather be able to throw more bombs um, than having an extra dodge. Uh, like this shoulder charge ability, don't care about that. Any shoulder charge ability for Han, I don't use because the shoulder charge is too unreliable for me. Um, I honestly like to go with, uh, since I'm getting rid of this one, I don't have to worry about health on kill. I'm going to definitely use the two bomb cards, pretty much always. Um, and then maybe uh, sharpshooter shots are less active. That way you can use Sharpshooter for a little bit longer. That's probably going to be my go-to loadout for Han. For, for all game modes. And then up next is Lando Calrissian. 
Lando's new card says, Buckle up, baby. Every enemy trooper defeated or 100 damage to villains reduces the heat per shot of Lando's x Knight Sniper permanently by 2% to a maximum. This effect resets when Lando is defeated. So, basically, just the more damage you do and the more kills you get, the more you can fire a weapon without overheating. Now, his blaster does overheat fairly quickly. Um, I probably won't go with that one, though, honestly. I'll probably go with the sharp shot distance and then maybe this one if it hits three or more targets the recharge time is faster um but which is also situational because i mean you don't always hit three at a time um so maybe instead of that one i'll go with like maybe something to buff the disabler uh like this one grows the radius or uh this one sticks to the ground longer without detonating i don't really use lando that much so I'd probably go with, with this loadout that way. Farther range, you can use it more frequently, and then you have more max health, and then you have health on kill. But obviously for heroes versus villains, I might not even use the sharp shot stuff. I'll probably just go with like disabler, disabler, disabler. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the loadout I'm rocking with, more health, and then those two cards is what I'm going with. But that's just my opinion. And then Leia's new card is pretty interesting. Leia's new card is called Stay Together. If she is within 15 meters of two friendly units, Leia and her close allies will take reduced damage. So, um, yeah, that sounds like it would be pretty good. That's probably the one I'm going to go with. That's kind of similar to, uh, to Finn. Um, so, I mean, if you stay close quarters, like let's imagine the final phase of Naboo or the final phase of Kamino where everybody's packed up together. That's where that card will shine. You'll be getting a lot of damage reduction. Your teammates will get damage reduction. So I'm probably going to go with that new card. I'll probably go with maybe less damage with the E11 and then more base health. But the E11, I honestly don't even think it's that good. So maybe you could buff the flashbang, make them blind for an extra 30 seconds. If you really like to play defense, you can increase the, the health of the shield. Uh, but... I kind of like to go with the secondary fire bonus damage. That way you can pick people off at a distance. So that's probably the loadout I'm going to go with is like buff your teammates, give yourself more health, and then pick people off at a distance. And then we have Luke Skywalker. Luke's definitely going to be getting a pretty good card. Uh, Luke's card is called Intensify. Every trooper defeated or 200 damage to heroes increases Luke Skywalker's lightsaber damage by 2 to a maximum. This effect resets after Luke is defeated. So I will probably go, let's say it's Galactic Assault. I will go with the push has increased area effect because that one shots people. And, I mean, more range, that means you'll be able to get more kills. Um, and then I'll probably go with his new card, honestly. His new card, that increases your lightsaber damage. You get enough kills with the force push. I mean, that stacks too. So, I'll probably be one-shotting people with the new card. And then, the other one's kind of a toss-up. Um, I kind of like this one where you can deflect more accurately. That's pretty handy. Um, I kind of like to go with the extra dash. Uh, but yeah, I mean if you like the repulse you can go with that one. Maybe you could go with the uh, Damage resistance. I kind of like to switch this one up on occasion too because I like to dash towards enemies and I'll have that damage reduction So that's pretty good um, And then here's versus villains. It's always good to go with that push not back. You can push people off of cliffs and stuff So let's say here's versus villains. I won't use the new card. I'd probably just go uh, pff, Repulse Repulse, maybe, or I'd go greater knockback, repulse, and then increase range for force push. Because on those maps like Kashyyyk, you can just push, 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 and then kill people that way. Um, but it's kind of just personal preference. I'll go with the uh, increased area of effect, the new card, and then an extra dash. And then Ray's card is kind of interesting depending on your play style. Ray's card is called Balance. Ray gains an extra dodge ability charge, but her stamina drains faster. Um, for me, that card's not really for me. I don't care about the extra dodge. She's really fast just the way she is. I'm okay with two dodges. Uh, so, I mean, I kind of like to go with the extra damage per hit with the dash strike. That way, if you hit like four or five people, pretty much insta-kill them. Um, I also like to go with the damage reduction sometimes. As Zeno, the top donator on the channel, has pointed out to me, if you use the Insight cards, you get a crap ton of freaking points 
from helping your teammates. So if you like to get MVP, I mean, that's pretty good to use both those insight cards. I underestimated how good insight actually was. Um, so yeah, I probably will not use Ray's new card. I will probably go with like damage reduction, more damage, and then I don't know, maybe one of these uh, cards for the different mind tricks or something. And then if it was heroes versus villains, I'd probably go with like bonus damage, those affected by mind trick, and then maybe mind trick has increased area of effect. And then of course we have Grandmaster Yoda. Now Yoda's new card is called Size Matters Not. When the uh, bonus health of presence depletes, it heals for some of the damage it prevented, but its cooldown is increased by 13 seconds. So Yoda, that basically translates into him being a complete monster. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Yoda is probably going to be the best hero in the game. He has a bunch of different options. He has, I mean, he can dash through people's blocks and I mean, he's a small target. Um, so what I'm gonna go with is I'm gonna go with the bonus health for presence. I'm going to go with his new card, which heals you for all the damage that you take while Presence is active. So that's two ways that you can get health. You're basically giving yourself a way, like some sort of like overshields in a way, and any damage that those overshields take converts into health. That's one way to look at it. And then after that, it kind of just depends. I like to go with uh, this one, like the, the growth of the Force Push just grows faster. That way I can... Uh, unleash it quicker than normal um, but it really kind of just depends um, you could maybe go with this one presence is active longer maybe that way you can take a little bit more damage I probably won't go with that one though you could go with the damage reduction um, for heroes versus villains loadout you could go with like more damage to, to enemy heroes you could go with an extra dash maybe get rid of the bonus health maybe go with uh, more dashes that way you can go through people's blocks Yoda has a bunch of different options but for me personally I'm gonna go with the bonus health I'm gonna go with the new card which will heal me and then I'm gonna go with the uh, radius growth speed but that's just what I'm gonna go with and I'll probably just use that for for everything because I don't use Yoda that much in here versus villain so I'll probably just use the same loadout then we have Finn. Finn's new card is called In Charge. During Undercover Team, Finn will grant damage reduction of 2% for each trooper defeated or 100 damage to villains to a maximum to all friendlies affected. This bonus stays until he's defeated. Okay. So Finn, if you want to be the like ultimate support class, you can with Finn. So which is what I'm going to go for. So let's let's look at that. We'll go, this is the new card. So 2% damage, and let's say it stacks to like 10 or 20%. So that gives your teammates damage reduction. This one, the radius of big deal is increased if two allies are affected. This increases the range tremendously. Like this will affect the entire throne room of Naboo, which will give your entire team overshields. And then another thing that you can do is maybe reduce the recharge time of it. That's another good thing to help your teammates. Um, and then maybe, I don't know, any of the Deadeye cards, because Deadeye's pretty good. I just personally am not going to use anything for uh, the pistol ability. It's just not that good. Uh, maybe this one, where you get headshots, it increases the duration of it. But, I mean, it recharges so quickly, it's probably not even worth using that card. So I'd probably just go with those two, and then any of the Deadeye abilities. And then we have Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's my favorite Star Wars character ever. I'm pretty excited for his new card. His new card is called Safeguard. After blocking 10 blaster shots, two abilities, or lightsaber attacks with his block, Obi-Wan gains a permanent reduction of 2% to all his stamina cost to a maximum. This effect resets when Obi-Wan is defeated. So that's definitely going to be pretty good. You could build a really massive just defense loadout with Obi-Wan. You could go, like, I like to use this uh, lightsaber and blaster stuff, drains less stamina. You could stack that. For every 10 blaster shots or two ab abilities or lightsaber swings blocked, you gain 2% like reduction of uh, to your stamina. So you could go with the new card, you could go with this one, and they would stack, and you could basically just block forever. I don't know how much that maximum is for that new star card let's say it's 20 percent that would be a 60 percent reduction to stamina drain 
That's insane. You could just stand there in a hallway and block pretty much endlessly. And if they ever fix the blocking system in Heroes vs. Villains, you could just block ability after ability. So definitely keep an eye on that one. I think it'll be pretty cool. I really like to play defensive with Obi-Wan. And then maybe you don't want a defensive loadout. Maybe you can go with, just say, screw the new card. And then you can go with, I don't know, extra restrictive mind. Or you could really increase your push. You could have more range to it and faster freaking recharge time. I always like to go with the increased max health regeneration. But for me, personally, I'm going to go with double defensive cards. And then last up, we have Anakin Skywalker. His new card is called Steamroll. Every enemy trooper defeat or 200 damage to villains decreases all of Anakin Skywalker's stamina cost by 2% to a maximum. Now, like I said before, the stamina system and the blocks and just the swings, all of that together, it's just a broken system. There's too many bugs and glitches and stuff, so I'm not even going to worry about that new card. If they ever fix the stamina system, that might be a great card to use because you can just swing forever. Um, so I'm going to probably use whatever. Like, there's so many different combos with Anakin. I like to use the increased max health, but, I mean, you have health on kill. You can just completely go for a damage loadout. So you could go with increased damage with lightsabers. You can go with increased damage with um, with the pool. You can go with increased damage or heroic might. So you could pull two people towards you do 50 extra damage, you can hit them with 50 extra damage of heroic might, and you can hit them with extra damage with lightsaber swings, all while you're getting health on kill. So, and you have freaking four abilities. So, there's a bunch of different combos you can go with Anakin. I personally might go with uh, maybe the increased range, or since Anakin already does a lot of base damage with his lightsabers, maybe switch it up and go with... Um, the extra health, maybe? There's a bunch of different stuff you can go with Anakin. I would use pretty much any of the pre-existing cards. I just personally wouldn't use the new one. Um, so those are the cards that I would use for the August update. Obviously, some of them might be a little bit good or bad, depending on like how they actually play out. I will be sure to update you guys once they actually come out. I'll let you know which cards are the best. But based off of what they say on paper and what everything looks like, those are the cards I'm going to go with. Uh, let me know what you guys are going to use for your individual heroes down in the comments below. If you guys haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to check out another video. Follow me on Twitch at SwaneePlaysGamesLive. And that's going to do it for me, guys. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Will you join me? Accept your fate. I grow impatient.